Welcome back to 60 Minutes. Tonight, for our hometown hero segment, we venture to a small town of Barrington that is a home to one of many Unico manufacturing facilities. Barrington faces a lot of unemployment and closing plants, and recently, this plant had to lay off half of their workforce. Unico didn't want to follow in these footsteps, so one management team stepped up to save this facility. They understood the goal of the company was to make money and that their actions had to contribute to this goal. They made changes that may not seem logical at the time, but had a huge impact to their operations. We spent time with their management team at Unico Barrington so they could share with you the steps they took and the effects of each change. That's why this week our hometown heroes are the Unico Barrington management team as their actions ultimately saved their manufacturing plant. So since I became the plant manager at Barrington, I knew things needed to change, but never had the motivation to get them done in the correct way. We were given three months to turn the plant around or the doors would close forever. But with the help of an old friend, we made changes that increased capacity and customer satisfaction. The entire time my team worked, we had to keep in mind that the goal was to make money and we needed to make changes that contributed towards this goal. First and foremost, my team had pinpointed the bottlenecks in our operation, and that's where we began. The first change we made was to move the quality inspection point before going into the bottlenecks, which were our NCX10 machine and the heat treat furnace. With this change, we were able to catch bad parts prior to spending time processing the bottlenecks. We found out 5% of NCX10 parts and 7% of heat treat parts did not conform with our quality standards. This saved time on bottlenecks, making sure only good parts were being worked. The next change we made ruffled a few feathers, but we implemented a new lunch rule to make sure bottlenecks were never sitting idle. This is because one hour lost on the bottleneck is one hour lost in our entire system. Finally, the third major change was to rearrange the work. We looked at the most overdue orders and put those in the front. Then we put the least overdue orders at the end. This way we could visually see which parts were used to fill orders and which were just going to fill our warehouse. Because at this point, filling our warehouse was not the most important and wasn't working towards our goal of making money. Like Alex was saying, we started to make changes. Man, things were getting exciting around here. I've worked at Unico for a long time and ain't never seen nothing quite like it. We were really starting to get excited over all these improvements. Things were really working. Overdue orders were finally getting filled, but we knew that there was more to be done if we were really going to make this plan efficient. So the next change was going to take help from everyone, especially our partners in the union that make this plant run every day. We decided to divide up the work into two colors, red and green. Now those red parts... They were a priority because they were going to go through our bottleneck stations. We never wanted those machines to be idle. Now the green, that was for the non-bottleneck parts, and they were going to be processed only when there were no red tag parts available. This idea was genius. Well, I guess you could say it was genius in the beginning. Our overdue orders went from 58 to 44 days, and the bottlenecks received parts promptly, and those parts moved through to assembly. I never thought we were going to get out of that back order hole. But man, there was a downside that we discovered. About 80% of our parts go through those bottlenecks, so the whip was growing on green tags at all of our machines since those red tags kept getting prioritized. We had to get creative if we were going to make sure that every part was getting through our process in a timely manner. So the next change we made was letting our workers know that when the parts had already been run through the bottleneck, we were going to put a yellow piece of tape on that red tag, showing it had been on through our hottest machine. This gave a signal that these products were already past quality, because we moved that process up before the bottlenecks, and they could just move right on into final assembly. I love it when things move in this plant. Sixth major change we made was having dedicated foremen and workers on all of our bottleneck machines. We needed one machinist and a helper at that NCX-10, and a foreman and two workers over in Heat Street. We had to reduce the idle time on these bottlenecks and make sure that they were always running, and the finished parts were promptly coming out of the furnace. Yeah, things were really moving now. This is quite the story coming out of this plant. It goes to show even small changes can make a huge difference. Before we continue to meet the team and hear their story, here's a quick recap of what they've done so far. So they moved quality before the bottlenecks, which were the NCX-10 and the heat treat furnace. They had a new lunch break policy so that the NCX, their bottleneck, was never sitting idle. They arranged our orders, most overdue to least overdue. They implemented the red and green tag process. They added a yellow tape to the post bottleneck parts in this red and green process so the employees knew if it had already been processed. And finally, they dedicated employees to those bottleneck machines. So let's head back to Barrington to see what other changes they've made. We had already made so many changes, we wondered what next steps could possibly be taken. The thought was, can we take capacity away from our bottlenecks? No, because 80% of our parts needed to go into our bottlenecks. So we couldn't take parts away, but we could add machines. So the NCX-10 actually replaced multiple machines, which we were able to get back into our facility. We brought back this Megma and a few others to help take the load off the NCX-10. 
We were also able to send some parts out to vendors to take capacity off the heat treat furnace. The biggest effect this had was offloading the bottlenecks, meaning we could get more capacity out of our entire system. We were able to increase productivity by 18% on the bottleneck station. I would say this is pretty good for a plant who used to be behind on every single order that we received. The next change was now that we took capacity off of our heat treat machine, how could we utilize it more effectively? Different parts ran at different temperatures. So we thought, could we combine the parts that run at the same temperature? This would increase the batch size in the heat treat machine, but our third shift foreman came up with the great idea of interchangeable tables that we could be stacked and loaded into the furnace before it actually runs. This process saved in change over time and more parts could be put through the heat treat furnace. We had created an internal process that was hurting our output. There were parts going into the heat treat furnace that didn't have to. Our engineers never stated that this was actually required. So we decided to go back to the original way of working. If the part was not heat treated, a slower processing of the cutting tool bite to a millimeter thick versus three millimeters was used. This was slower for those doing the job, but since it wasn't the bottleneck, we were okay adding more time to this process. This pulled almost 20% of parts away from the heat treat furnace. The craziest part of our story so far is that we, all these changes were made in one month. We saw an increase from 31 customer orders at a value of about $2 million to 57 customer orders at a value of about $3 million. Making these changes help reduce our WIP inventory by 12%. There are still a few more changes that we made to our operation to get it where it is today, and we're going to cover those a little bit later. Hello, this is Lou, and let me tell you, this has been a crazy transition, but we made it happen because here at Unico, we work as a team. Now, the next change we made was we added computer terminals to our NCX-10 machine and our heat treat furnaces. Well, what this did was it allowed us to release red tag materials according to the rate at which the bottleneck needed them. As a result, we were able to reduce all that inventory pile up in front of the bottlenecks with creation of new temporary bottlenecks. Furthermore, our team was now able to predict within a day more or less of when the shipment would leave the plant with better accuracy, which in turn gave us better information regarding lead time that we now could communicate to our customers. Now, with these 10 major changes in over a month, let me tell you, our plant have seen some positive outcome. Well, for starters, our finished good and whip inventory levels have declined. And you know what? As we speak now, they're still rapidly declining. The bottlenecks are getting their parts near supposed to, and flow within the plant is moving much smoothly than before. Overall, our efficiencies are headed up, and we managed to wipe out those overdue backlogs, and our customer service has improved. Now, the last change we made was we decided to cut the batch sizes again at the non-bottlenecks. I know, I know, I know you're shaking your head and you're saying, that's not logical. But let me tell you what. What has happened because of that is our idle time have been spread out over shorter segments and the flow within the plant, again, is running smoothly. You know what? The parts are now ready to be received at the next station sooner and our efficiency stayed solid. I mean, we were running so well. What could possibly go wrong? And because of our improved efficiency, you know what? Alex decided to go visit Johnny Giles over at headquarters. You know why? For some marketing campaigning of new contracts, showcasing and forecasting new shorter lead times. And guess what happened? As a result, we were able to secure a half a dozen. I didn't say one. I didn't say two. I didn't say three. I said a half a dozen new contracts. Well, we fell behind on one of the order, which made us believe that we were going to be behind on the rest of them. But we had to remember that with any plant process, there are going to be elements that are complete out of your control. So what we did was we made the necessary changes to make our process better so that we can continue to reach toward the goal. And you know what that is, don't you? To make money. Hey, I'm Bill. Great job, David. So let's add to our list to see what other changes they made. They then utilized old equipment to help take the capacity off the bottlenecks. They increased the batch sizes into the heat treat furnace. They reverted back to an old process to help take the capacity off the heat treat. They added data terminals to the bottlenecks. They cut the batch sizes in half to the non-bottleneck machines. Finally, this 12th one, they were able to gain new marketing contracts due to the shortened lead time. So this is why this week, the Unico Barrington management team is our hometown hero. They made these changes to increase productivity, increase customer satisfaction, and ultimately save their plant from the fate of being closed forever. Good night and stay safe.